What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome back to the channel. Guys, I am super excited for today's video because guess what? We finally did it. We cracked the code to the Dragonite. The build that has eluded us for so long in update 35 is in our grasp. It's literally in our hand right now. This build is scary, scary good. It's absolutely devastating. Not just devastating in terms of being a Dragonite PvP build. This is one of the most devastating PvP builds out currently in the patch. And guys, I cannot wait to talk about it. So let's get into it. Swear I won't forget this. Why do I regret this? In my mind, reckless. Thoughts are feeling endless. Sitting up, I'm breathless. Anxiety's infectious. I feel so defenseless, betrayed and embarrassed. I hate being open. I hate being broken. I feel like an ocean filled up with emotion. Anger ain't a potion. Rub it on like lotion. I can feel it soaking. Reopen the scars have awoken. I can't move on till I let go. I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go Welcome back guys. Hopefully you enjoyed watching the clips nearly as much as I enjoyed making them. And there's a bonus clip at the end. It's about five minutes long. It's actually pulled directly from my live stream from the most intense 1VX I've had this entire year. I actually commentate my thought process through the entire thing. So if you guys are interested in that, don't skip the video. Please watch all the way through. Thank you very much. And as always, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members here on YouTube. The support you guys provide is absolutely phenomenal. And I honestly would not be doing this channel if it wasn't for you guys' support. So if you're curious on how you can support the channel, there's a link down in the description. So without further ado, guys, let's get into the build. Welcome to my humble abode here in Cold Harbor. Now, it's a very special video because I actually have a twofer. You guys are going to get two builds out of this one. A one bar open soul PvP build as well as a two bar. Yay! Um, both hit uh, about the same, but the problem with Oaken Soul is it does inconsistently proc one of the sets that we're trying to proc, and we really don't want to, so uh, more about that later. And to the observant eye, you may notice that we have grown a tail. Yes. This is the meta now, boys. We are into the furry meta. The, the, the crit DK, the kitty crits, the cr kitty crux crit, crit build DK, something. A lot of crit. We have a lot of crit and a lot of crit damage. That's what you need this patch because they absolutely crapped on dots. Dots are no longer a thing. So the only way to reasonably burst people in open world is to have the highest amount of burst possible. And what better way to do that than having 100% crit, having the highest crit damage multipliers possible, while ignoring everyone's resistances. 
seems pretty good right and the dk does all of that actually this is probably the only class that can get away with this so without further further ado let's do it taking a look at the character sheet i know you guys are automatically going to be drawn to what our recoveries sit at do not worry about our recoveries whatsoever we're running two infused cost reductions on this build which is going to absolutely carry your sustain that in conjunction with a very very high corrosive uptime in conjunction conjunction what's your function and you guys remember watching that video also 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 with battle ward passive so the idea is to generate more resources than we consume and we do that with two infused cost reductions i'll explain a little bit more about that later if you guys watch the video at the end you guys see that i have pretty much maximum magic at the entire time during the fight only with 600 magic recovery so the dk is only class and get away with this i felt that it was very important for me to say this because most people is like oh if you don't have 1500 or 2k recover your trash no the dk actually functions much much better with cost reduction so uh here's our stat sheet completely unbuffed uh totally buffed up it's hard telling what this gets to right um he actually doesn't matter what this gets to to be honest with you I think you're gonna be doing hellacious damage uh weapon damage is going to go up to uh, 6k with uh, continuous attack um or so something like that i haven't really tested it it really doesn't matter for this build critical resistance is a little bit higher than what i want that's just because i don't have enough transmute stones to make everything well fitted so um it is what it is uh take a look at the back bar back bar resistances are pretty good and pretty solid and then with blood spawn these get up to around 30k each uh, which is really good and we are running a defensive back bar set so our resistances really don't matter all too much um here is the stat layout and again guys if you haven't noticed, we are a Khajiit. Yes, we made the race change to a Khajiit. We desperately need the critical damage to coincide with this build. Now, this is a very tough build to play. It is very dependent on timing. If you are new to the DK, this is probably not going to be a very good build to start out on. But once you start learning the DK and mastering like your timings and mastering you know, your pros and cons of your class and actually learning your rotations, this is going to be a phenomenal setup. Like This is the most burst you can possibly have on the Dragonite. And this is specifically made for 1vx and 2vx and content okay now if you do have a partner with you this build's gonna be so easy to do you just gotta wait for your acuity approx spoiler alert and you just go ham i mean it's, it's as simple as that be what sugar skulls is the food i'll stop with the elongated intro here's your stats again i try to get around 30,000 health especially if you're new to the dk I mean, if you are more familiar with the class, you can take points out of health and put them into magic. But I'm sitting around comfortably around 29k currently. So there's the stat sheet again. The stat sheet is not a rendition of how this build plays. You guys saw the clips as well as the clip at the end. You'll see how powerful this build really is. So start off, guys. We're using our weapon damage is so low is because we're actually not running swords. We're running acuity on our front bar and we're actually running axes axes if you guys did not know give you six percent crit damage per axe so in total this is 12 percent crit damage i never point this out on the character sheet itself but taking a look at our critical damage is at 51 percent um that's really really high i think most night blades cap off at like i think it's like 56 or 61 percent so your crit damage is going to be really really high and you have 100 percent uptime on your acuity right so if you guys are unfamiliar with what acuity does Essentially, the TLDR of this set is uh, whenever you cause damage, it causes it procs. So you have a four second period to do non critical damage. Doesn't matter if it's a dot, light attack, uh, direct attack, doesn't matter. During that four second window, if you don't get a critical hit, you get 20% extra critical chance added to your critical chance. So, for example, on our character sheet, we are currently sitting at 24.4 okay that means it's going to go up to 44.4 and then it resets another four second window if you get a non-crit during that four second window it goes up to another 20 percent etc etc until you get to 100 critical chance upon reaching 100 critical chance you have a four second duration to where all your attacks are going to crit not only do your attacks crit but your heals do as well so it makes you super tanky and you can output a lot a lot of damage now the only caveat to this set is that it does have a pretty substantial downtime so this can only occur every 25 seconds but ironically the way this build functions is that you get your corrosive armor around the exact same time as your acuity if you guys watch the clip at the end of the video you will see like three times in a row i'm calling out okay my corrosive's coming up that means my acuity is also coming up cooldown and they coincided each and every single time so i made this as dumb as possible for you guys to line up your burst with the acuity the tldr okay to properly use this set if you are under 20 percent crit count to five before you go in for your big dick burst if you are 
39.999999% crits all the way down to 20% crits. Count to four seconds for your burst. And that should give your acuity enough time to get to the proper amount of stacks at which you'll have 100% crit chance. So it does require a little bit of mental agility on your end, but guys, the burst is absolutely amazing, okay? Back bar set, we're, yes, we're still running Mars because this is still the most broken 1VX set in the entire game. Yes, this is going to get nerfed at some point, but until that happens, until we cross that bridge, we're still going to be crutching on this, okay, very, very heavily. We're running powered on the back just to amplify the effect of this. You don't really need defensive on this build, in my opinion. We're running a weapon damage enchantment on the back bar as well. Um, front bar, we are running the uh, the poison and shock. I also forgot to mention the traits is Nerd and charge. I found that this is just better overall charge. You still need status effects up on people because we are running a CP passive occult overload. If you guys don't know what occult overload does, we'll touch base on that here in just a moment. Our monster set of choice is going to be blood spawn. Uh, this is the uh, best in slot and the magic of Dragonite, in my opinion. You do want six well fitted, one heavy reinforced, ideally on this build guy still yet even though we're a khajiit um i unfortunately do not have a medium blood spawn helmet so i don't have a medium slot here so there is room to optimize the build okay so we're running five medium one heavy one light that's the most damage you're going to get you don't need any more tankability with that when you pair everything with mars bomb and if you guys again are unfamiliar with what mars bomb does each single time a negative effect is removed from you um you get healed now what that means is every single time effect is reapplied let's say for example you keep reapplying ellie drain every single time you do that you're healing them for 500 every single time a dot falls off you're healing them from around 500 every single time play break ticks the disease status effect okay you're healing them 500 every single tick you guys get it now upon reaching i think it's like six negative effects it actually cleanses all the negative effects from you and you get 500 health i know the tooltip says a thousand but in serial it's 500 right so you actually get for per negative effect removed, you get healed for a 500 per negative effect. This can occur four times a minute, which is really, really powerful. And it's really good having this on your back bar because if you see like a Templar, for example, apply a power of the light to you and you have amalgamation of heavy, heavy or negative effects and you're like on your front bar, right before the power light goes off, just swap to your back bar and then Mars bomb just cleanses everything right so now their burst is completely gone so it's little snafus like that little niches like that that makes this set so powerful if you know how to use it correctly now moving on to the rest of the guild uh the rest of the gear again you want to try stats and your big pieces i just found that's what's best little pieces i don't really worry about it it's not too much save your money okay i do have everything golded out Oof. drew wax is like 35k per unit on pc it's it's, it's gross guys and again, you want six well fitted, uh, one heavy reinforced chest. I don't have enough transmute stones, so I don't. And then our mythic item is going to be Sea Serpent's Coil. You run whatever mythic item you really want, but Sea Serpent's Coil gives you 15, almost 16% increased damage pretty much at all times. And there, there is a little trick that I use at the uh, end clip of this video that um, the snare is very, very annoying. Uh, you guys already know about bee hopping. I preach that enough in every single video I've ever done, but. The trick to Sea Serpent's Coil is you don't get that snare on you if you never reach 100% health. So when you guys see me kiting around, I'm not doing burst heals. I'm applying casually, uh, casually applying bigger just so I have enough health to keep me pretty high but not hit 100% because as soon as you hit that 100%, it's going to snare you and it's going to make 1BX and mobility much, much more difficult. But if you're able to balance it, while you're on the defense and not have a sea servants proc it's very very powerful and when you're ready to go in for your burst pop coag gift 100 percent sea serpents is now proc and now you have all the damage in the world for your burst so that's just a, a little trick that you can use to get around the snare effect of sea serpents coil now i did mention we had two infused cost reductions this is the best way to go on the dragonite a nice rule of thumb is that if you have five medium and or heavy pieces run two infused cost reductions your sustain will be perfectly fine now if you're running five light for whatever reason i would only suggest running one infused cost reduction and your sustain is going to be gucci as long as you have a charge weapon on the front just to make sure you keep the burning stats effect up right and then weapon damage on the final piece here now when it comes to potions you guys want to use I, I hate to be that guy, but if you want these timings to line up correctly, you do have to use the heroism potions that I have down here somewhere. They're very, very expensive to make. You get these by farming dragon. So there's dragon's rum, dragon's blood, and columbine are the ingredients you need to make these potions. 
These are absolutely phenomenal, very essential on the Dragonite to make it super viable, this patch. If you do not have all the money in the world, right, if you're not farming dragons, okay, you can run tripods, but just keep in mind, this does give you minor heroism during the entire duration of the potion, so there's that. And one more thing to note about your ice staff, guys, please, when you go to your skills and you go down to destruction staff, do not have tri-focus active because you will run out of magicka really fast if you do. So I'm going to take one more moment to just explain how this combination works. Okay, if you guys haven't already picked up on it, you might be new, you know, so you veterans out there, just bear with me for one moment, please. So the idea is to not be on your front bar unless you're ready for your burst. That's why front barring this is very, very powerful because you can actually time out to when you want to go in for your burst, okay? The idea is to turtle on your back bar until you get your corrosive. Once you have your corrosive, you swap to your front bar and mechanical acuity is going to proc. So during your corrosive, you're ignoring all resistances whatsoever. You're super tanky. And then because you are in corrosive, that gives you a chance to stay on your front bar to start accumulating these stacks. And again, if you can stay on your front bar for around five seconds, you want to have 100% crit chance. So whoever you target with a fossilized, molten whip, whatever, spin the wind, they're going to die. All right. And just one more point to note, if for whatever reason you accidentally proc acuity and you go to your back bar and you turtle for a couple seconds, be really careful because if you are not causing damage while your acuity four second windows are up, it will fall off and you won't get any of your acuity whatsoever. So you have to be on your front bar when you're ready for your burst to start accumulating these stacks or at least flip flop back and forth to give your dots enough time to at least get a non-critical hit while you're on your front bars for just a second or two okay so it is kind of a tricky set to use but once you guys get used to it it's going to carry you okay guys so when it comes to the skills the very first skill is going to be engulfing flames now i'm choosing engulfing flames because this bolsters all of our flame damage we're not really carried about the dot we're just worried about it adding to our burst so the question is why am i not running noxious the idea with this build is to use your corrosive. Use leap if you have to, use leap to secure kills, but the idea behind it is to use corrosive. And as you guys know or may not know, corrosive gives you 100,000 physical and spell penetration. So therefore, if you have noxious breath on the bar, which applies major breach, which gives you 6,000 spell and physical penetration, that's completely wasted during your burst. So the idea is to have as much damage as possible during your corrosive spin to win, okay? Next, we have Shattering Rocks. Now, depending on what champion points you want to run will actually determine what skill goes here. Now, if you want to run Exploiter, you'll definitely want to run Fossilize because you're going to have the off-balance stats effect on pretty much every single person you Fossilize. And the Exploiter passive, if you guys don't know, gives you a 10% extra damage against off-balance targets. So, if you don't want to run Exploiter, run Shattering Rocks. Shattering Rocks actually does give you a pretty nice heal, but it's damn near impossible to get the off-balance stats effect with this. Next is Flames of Oblivion. This is our spammable. Yes, spammable. You'll be using this to pump up your Seething Fury stacks to ensure you always have a times three Seething Fury Molten Whip ready to go at any time. Next is Molten Whip. Of course, this is the bread and butter of the build, right? So this is going to be your pseudo execute. This is going to be your burst. I'm hitting people right now on the Khajiit with 16, 17K whips during corrosive while acuity is active. If I can do it, I know you guys can too. You can actually push a lot more damage in this build if you're running in a group play, but because I'm running solo, I have to pull back on that damage a little bit just for survivability. Last but certainly not least is Whirling Blades. Whirling Blades is our execute. So if your leap doesn't kill him, if your fossilized molten whip doesn't kill him, right? Spin to win is absolutely amazing because as soon as anyone gets CC, they're at a thought process is to break free roll dodge and this is to catch people in the roll dodge which you'll see at the end of the video i actually catch two people in these roll dodges and it's phenomenal the way it works out now there is a cast animation you can do with this so whirling blades has a really bad backswing to it during the, the cast animation so um when you guys cast this just please block cancel it you can block cancel roll dodge whatever just, just block cancel it to make sure you shave off that tail end of the back swing okay on our front bars ferocious leap this is more of a utility skill and can also be used as a burst uh during your acuity proc it's used as a gap closer because these serpent scroll does slow you tremendously if you're not bee hopping it's used as kind of can execute through roll dodge and gives you a shield it's the one of the best offensive slash defensive ults in the game besides corrosive so it's pretty much essential in any dk build unless you want to run dawn breaker now dawn breaker is an interesting alternative because what sometimes happens is when you leap someone and then whip them 
they are just out of the range of Whirling Blade and sometimes you actually have to move your character in the way that they get knocked in the air in order to clip them with your Whirling Blades. Now you could run Steel Tornado but it does do 50% less damage on people in execute range so there's that. On the back bar we're running Igneous Weapons. Uh, this is better than the uh, Molten Armaments because they give you 80%. Uh, I think it's heavy attack damage to monsters uh, in PvE. Well this is in PvE so naturally you'll want to go with the longer duration one. Coag is our burst heal. Uh, we have Resolving Vigor. You pretty much want to pop this off cooldown, right? It's pretty much quintessential in any Dragonite build. Volatile Armor is really, really good because it actually does apply a lot of flame damage. And as you guys know, flame damage can proc the Brain Stats effect, which can proc Combustion, which actually gives you a thousand magic back, which is really, really powerful. And last but certainly not least, is Cinder Storm. This is the bread and butter of the build, guys. Cinder Storm. With two infused cost reductions, even one infused cost reduction, you notice that I actually don't have a magic cost on this because it's completely free to cast. And if you all are unfamiliar why this is so powerful and why I use it pretty much in every single build, because this is a way to generate free stamina out of virtually nowhere. Every single time you cast Ash Cloud, you're going to get 1000 stamina back due to the Helping Hands passive, which is very overtuned and very broken. So hopefully, Zoss leaves this skill alone and we can just generate stamina out of thin air so it's a very 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 heavy healing over time ability as well and what you can also do when you're snared by sea serpent's coil if someone's trying to run away you can actually toss it in front of them and this applies a 70 percent snare as well so it'll actually give you a little bit of time to catch up with them and the ultimate on the back bar is corrosive this is the bread and butter of the build again guys you're on your back bar you pop corrosive you swap to your front bar acuity is up you're going to count to five and at five you're going to fossilize whip spin to win and someone's going to die okay if someone doesn't die just blame the lag okay lastly i'm going to go over the champion points now these are all preference these are the ones i found most beneficial this is an all-in damage build okay you are super tanky because of mara's bomb and you also do have 30k resistances and also an ice staff to block with so you're not really that squishy all right and no we're not a vampire I'm just throwing that out there the very first passive is a cult overload uh, this is the most stat dense cp of all time as soon as you kill someone that has a stats effect on them, that'd be um, poison, concuss. I, I I think there's like seven different ones, stats effects, you know, whatever. And you can kind of pick and choose what you want to apply for your enchants to what stats effects you want. But this does 12,800 irresistible damage. Even if you're in corrosive and someone dies next to you over here, you know, some potato, if they explode with a cult overload, that pierces your corrosive armor. So instead of only taking damage at 3% of your maximum health, you're taking the full 12,800, which is so powerful. And this leads into a chain reaction, right? You can literally one shot an entire group of people with this, or at least soften your next target up during your burst. Next is fighting finesse. Since this is a crit build, this is essential. This is also going to increase our critical healing as well. I've been in many situations where I've gotten over 20K critical heals from Coag. Yes, 20K. Kajit, meta, best in slot, don't care. <laughs> Um, next is Deadly Aim. Uh, this one is debatable. Um, you can put this in Deadly Aim to bolster your whips and more. Or you can put this champion point in Dividing Ores to bolster your Whirling Blades damage as well as your leap. Um, just kind of depends on uh, what you like, to be honest. And then last but certainly not least is Mastered Arms. Uh, you need this one. All right. Uh, Red Tree. Uh, this is why I like to run. All right. So we're going the Trifecta here. We're running Pain's Refuge, which is very, very powerful. Even with Mars Bomb cleansing all the effects as soon as mars bomb cleanses effects to you you're going to have a shit ton applied to you anyway so it really doesn't matter a sustained by suffering this is going to give us 150 recoveries and everything because you're always going to be afflicted by a status effect relentlessness this is here to give us our major protection so when you get cc you immediately get major protection the only time you're really going to die is during a cc anyway so having major protection during that time just so you can get back on your feet is phenomenal last but certainly not least in the in the red tree is survival instincts so while you have a stats effect on you all your core combat abilities are going to cost 25 percent less this is break free roll dodge blocking bashing you know whatever uh this is essential for your stamina sustain green tree does not really matter um just be sure you have war mounts and because these are very very expensive potions guys please get liquid efficiency because you do have a 10 percent chance to get that potion back and each potion like realistically costs you like 5,000 gold when you're chugging them okay 
All right, guys, so build number two, if you're lazy like me, you just want to run one bar, you don't have to worry about all the buffs and debuffs on your back bar. This is going to be for you. The damage is still about the same, but I will not lie to you all. It is a little bit boring playing this one, but the effects are kind of still the same, to be honest. The two bar build does offer a lot more potential, um, like ceiling wise for your burst damage because you do have sea serpents on that build whereas you don't have it on this one but the caveat is on this build you have minor force which gives you 10 percent extra crit damage so it kind of balances out anyway another pro to running the open soul build is that you're going to get your ultimate quicker a lot quicker actually because we're running potentates on this as well i'll go ahead and go over what has changed on the one bar so if you do want to run this in the one bar Potentate's front bar, you'll want to run Nernhone. Ideally, you will want axes, but at the point of making this video, I do not have gold axes for this video. Okay, so I just have the swords. So definitely have axes for this. You'll want to run Nernhone and also Decisive. The reason you want Decisive is that you're going to get this benefit literally all the time. Instead of if you go to the two bar build, you're only going to have the benefits of Decisive only like half the time. Okay. So you need to change your armor weights. So of course we're running Oaken Soul. We're running uh, Potentates Jewelry as well, okay? And then we're also running one Trainee as Jewelry. Now you can put the Trainee piece wherever you want, but the idea is to always have two infused magic at cost reductions, one weapon damage. Now when it comes to your gear, you'll want to have mechanical acuity on the body, the waist, hands, legs, feet, or you can have in the jewelry. Just make sure you have one piece training somewhere on this build as well. The monster set is still going to be the same. Ideally, you'll want to have one heavy reinforced piece and then the rest will be six medium well fitted. Excuse me, five medium well fitted and then uh, one light well fitted as well. The only downside to this build is that you don't have control on when to proc acuity. So you'll run into situations where your acuity will go off, but you won't have your corrosive and vice versa. You'll have your corrosive ready to go, but you won't have your acuity. So you will run into instances like that where they don't always line up, but uh, it is what it is. When it comes to champion points, literally every single champion point is going to be the same in the blue and red tree. Now, the only thing I really would change is if you run this build, you are going to lose a little bit of your health. So instead of having the 5311 spread, I would suggest getting your health up to at least 29k. So sacrifice some points of magic and put them in the health. You are a little bit tankier on the setup just because of all the minor and major buffs that Oaken Soul provides. So there is, you know, a catch 22 between the two builds. Which one fits your playstyle? That's entirely on you. The buildup is going to be the same. The skills, um, you're going to want to run Coag on your front bar. You notice on the other build, Coag is only sitting at 10k. Well, Coag here is like 11.5, right? So your healing is going to be a little bit stronger on this build. Shattering rocks for sure. Flames of Oblivion as your spammable. Molten Whip and then Resolving Vigor. So this is going to be the bar setup. Obviously with Corrosive, Corrosive is only going to cost 170. Again, guys, I do prefer the Khajiit for this build because this, since we're abusing it, mechanical acuity, crit damage is absolutely everything. That's where our burst is going to come from. That does it for the two build guys. Hopefully you all enjoy this build. Give it a chance, give it a couple days. Once you master the acuity, you're never going to go back. You're really not. If you have any questions whatsoever, guys, please let me know down in the comments or in Discord. The link is down in the description below. And I also do go live a few times a week. So if you want to be notified for that, you have to hit the bell icon. Otherwise, youtube will not notify you okay also 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 if you're just coming back to pvp or maybe eso in general and you want to kind of expedite your whole learning process all over again i also offer one-on-one -on -one pvp coaching you can just hit me up anytime down in the comments on um, videos you can hit me up in discord preferably so i adjust your roles you actually do get access to different discord channels where you know you can sit and chill with me you know do some battlegrounds you know stuff like that so uh, the description has everything you need for that. And uh, guys, if you made it to the end of the video, please check out the five minute video clip here at the end. The The live commentary is actually pretty good. Um, I enjoyed making it. Uh, but yeah, I suck at outros. So uh, I'm just going to cut it here. Peace. Yo, I'm coming, blue guy. Yo, don't die on me, dude. Don't, don't, don't die on me. No. No, I killed the blue guy after I said no. I didn't mean to kill him, dude. I'm so sorry. We're going to kill all these players. Dude, this is about to be the 1vx of the patch right here.
I'm concentrating, guys. Just give me a second, please. Just give me a second. I'll respond to comments and shit. Everyone's getting res, man. Fuck. Nothing I can do about it, man. There's just so many people. There's nothing I can do here. I, I have to relocate completely in order to do this correctly. I just got double CC'd there. Oh, man. That sucks. I just had to leap to survive there. Really unfortunate. I gotta get to my next corrosive. I can kill him, but I might die. No, yeah, I have to go back bar. Fuck, man. If I get CC'd here, I'm dead. Just trying to get resources. Oh, no, no, no. I should. I have to leap for resources, man. It feels bad moment, but it is what it is. Yo, we got a kill off of it. Let's go. No, 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 no. Not like this. No, dude. You bastards. This is true 1v- this is 1vx at its finest, boys, okay? Remember that. This is what I try to teach you all. <laughs> come up here, go ahead. Okay, he did come up here, oof. I just gotta get acuity proc again, and I can go in for another burst. Oh, don't pull me off here. Oh, fuck. Inevitable death. I'm trying to. I'm trying to stall out for corrosive. Fuck me. Oh no, that's not good. I can one shot this guy right here. Yeah, he's dead. Nope. I didn't have full mechanical acuity up. Fuck man. Yeah, dodge the big dive again. That should slow them down a little bit. Roll dodge that. Get back to my hidey hole. Um, I just gotta start CCing people to get stamina back. I can knock these people off right here. Just so I can have less people to contend with. Which is exactly what I'm gonna do. And then I should be able to spin to win him here. Yep, got that. Oh, oh I went too far. Fuck. That's not what I wanted to do. Fuck, man. I'm actually in trouble. I'm failing all my jumps right now. If I can get to a corrosive, I can actually turn this pretty heavily. Roll dodge that. It's good. It's good. Oh, man. Acuity should be coming up really soon. Uh, yeah, there it is. Please crit. Oh, got him. I just can't, I can't interrupt all the reses, man. There's too many. Go to this tree over here. Actually, no, it rocks me really good. It's probably a bad call, actually. Yeah, we gotta go back to the rock. I don't feel safe here. I get stamina back, spamming this. Magic of pool is fine. Um, I have do corrosive acuity. Should be coming up right now. I can get another burst right here. If I can target, oh, fuck. Um, I can't kill him. Nope, I could not. Fuck, man. Ah, oh, you bitch. Ooh, that's, that's gonna suck. I gotta get stamina back big time. Go on this side. Uh, get our buffs up. Like, Cutie should be proccing momentarily. Yep, I'm actually just gonna leap here. I should be able to kill him and keep him dead. Yep, he's dead. Good luck, brother. Absolutely fucking not. There's still people up here? What are you doing, brother? Alright, boys. Let's let's get it. This is the 1VX rock of the patch. I told you all this would be a good clip.
There we go. We did it. Whew. Man, if we had a cult overload there, we'd be Gucci. We would have been Gucci as fuck. We would like one shot like so many of them. What? I mean, we got the clip. It's okay. Even if we fuck up here, we, we got the clips. It's plenty okay. Oh, you bastard. I'm killing him. With, can I kill him with a heavy? Watch this. Watch this shit. Oh, dude. All right, we did it.